Come on, dogs. Yeah, Chelos. So they do a little day in the life of dogs. Oh. Just out here on my go away. You freaking bum. Look at you, you nitwit. Come on. Go. Now we're just out here in the woods again. My favorite place to come. Here with my doggies. And we're just getting here to be grounded and just enjoy the woods, you know. I mean, it doesn't always got to be something super deep or whatever. It's just, woods are nice, you know. Look nice, smell nice. Place I prefer to be. As long as it's near an ocean. Anyhow, just thought I'd come out here and do a little, like, you know, this is what a researcher does, I guess. <laughs> you know, this is just sort of like the excitement. This is the excitement of the life of a cultural person, researcher, you know. All that little stuff that I post and I write and everything, I mean, that's all just things in my head, you know. That's, and it all comes from just being out here, you know. I look at that tree and I was just like, wow, man, that's freaking trippy, bro. And then I went home and I thought about it and, you know, like freaking months later, I know the history of this place going back a few centuries. And that's just how it is. For some of us afflicted with the gene of obsession over history and tradition and research, quit tearing that up, you freaking bum. Go, come on. Shh, shh. Both of you dogs. Buns. Beach buns. Anyhow. Here's a little cool thing. So this whole grove that I like to come to has this pairing, consistent pairing. And I believe this is a western hemlock and this is the cedar, of course. Um, young cedar. But, um... It's more Sitka and cedar than it is hemlock and cedar, but uh, it's just interesting how they choose to grow in this grove because they don't grow like this all over the place of walk. It's kind of how they do here. I like to call them married trees. And I got a whole bunch of, uh, what's it called? Cedar bark trees here. So like, look at this gorgeous one. Long straight bark, you know, there's some knots, you know, here and there, but this grove is full of these really nice long straight bark cedars. But see, there's a, there I go again, you know, rabbit trailing off my main path, you know, my main message or whatever the heck I was trying to do. I'm just always thinking about our culture and how it looked in the real life, you know. And these days, you just gotta have a great imagination. You know, you gotta know the history and research it. And ooh, I like to collect these little. Ooh, where'd you go? Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a little burl nut. Those like fall from the trees, you know, you can carve them into cool things. That one looks like an old dirty butt. <laughs> Which brings me to a, uh, like a cultural topic I could talk about. <laughs> and that cultural topic is that today's like prude standards of like how we can talk is like a completely modern western uh, really like Quaker Christian concept you know we like read Annie Minor Peterson's book um, Coyote something or other I don't know I have test anxiety even when I'm recalling my own memory but um, anyway Annie Minor Peterson's got a great biography and read that 
quit ripping the cedar roots. Yuck. God damn, fuck her. Excuse my language. But she, uh, she, <laughs> she freaking details all the, you know, dir- funny, dirty jokes and songs and just the way we perceive the world around us, you know, like, everybody's not like, oh, you gotta be an adult, you can't, you can't make a fart joke or you can't make a joke about a big butt or whatever, and it's like, well, you know, I got a big butt, and Goldie, you see this, mu- this bum, quit messing with the Enough. Come on. Lord Almighty. Anyway, read Annie Minor Peterson's book. Coyote something or other whatever. Message me for details. I'll give you the real title. But yeah, I mean, the way we behave, the way we perceive, you know, it's just all a mix of Western traditions of like being these prude, oh, you're an adult now. And you window around children. You know, but Annie Minor Peterson was trying to tell us that's how we taught our kids, you numbskulls. You know, and it also took the stigma away from talking about sexuality and gender constructs and, you know, the human body and what it does and what it do. Gross! <laughs> And, uh, anyhow, she really explains it better than I ever could because, of course, she lived it. And I'm just recalling it, you know. But little bits of that live on. You know, they live on in our memories. They live on in our families, I should say. And, you know, if your family has a tradition of having, like, funny, dirty jokes, you know, it's likely an inherited tradition from your indigenous Oregon Coast traditions, you know. It's all for a meaning, too. Well, that I'm out here, I'm kind of thinking about me look up dogs. You know, with my dogs out here. Repping around the woods like this freaking bum over here. Hey, bum! Yeah, she knows her real name. Goldie the Beach Bum. Come on! Where are you going? dogs in two different directions. Goldie, if you want to join us, we're going this way. There's my other dog. It's actually my wife's beautiful dog. And now she kind of looks like, from the documentation and the scant photos of our indigenous dog breeds that existed here in Oregon, she's pretty close to what a Miluk elk dog looks like. Hey! Yeah, woo! And, uh, wanted to kind of show, sort of, just, if you will, escape with me into a world of imagination, where this is a Miluk Elk Dog. Miluk Elk Dog number one! So now, talking about traditions on these elk dogs, they were big, bodied, wolf-like in appearance. Girls don't get too far ahead of me now. And, uh, anyhow, they're big wolf like in appearance. They had both floppy ears, but they primarily had more of a, you know, shepherd wolf like pointed ears. Um, black and white. This sort of similar coat. Not exact, of course, but, you know, more of a wolfy coat, if you know what I mean. And now she is half mastiff and half golden lab. And now, hey! She's freaking addicted to spruce roots, man. But, uh, and of course, Goldie, her mother, that's her mother right there, is golden lab, and her mother was a purebred golden retriever, and her father was a purebred golden lab, or I'm sorry, uh, yellow lab, both AKC and uh, just huge. They were both really big. So Bella came out super big because her, of course, she's half Mastiff. Girls, I think they want me to show you this whole area over here. Now these dogs, you know, when they're out elk hunting anyway, they're, this is what they do, you know, they go and just run and run and run and they're sniffing, of course. 
and they're finding elk. Now, Goldie is a trained bird dog. I trained her on duck and mostly upland bird oil, actually. She just really keys in on, like, grouse and pheasant and quail. I like to shoot quail. Um, and so she's looking for birds. But uh, in the tradition, anyhow, they'd be looking for elk. Bella! And I think they want me to show you this little crooked tree. You know, they're like, hey, come show you this. This is a culturally modified tree. And uh, in those days, those trees could be used to signal, like, elk hunting grounds. You know, like, say, the girls know, hey, this is where the elk trail begins. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. <laughs> They're getting tired already. They're so fat. Just like me. Come on, Bella. Come on, Bella. Come on. We ain't going down there. Sorry, girl. Now, I hear how I command these girls? We kind of hiss at them. And now that's something that my dad did. And so, I mean, of course I did it. And I never understood what the hell it meant. You know, I just figured it was like, he was sensitive to noises like I am. And so he didn't want to whistle and yell and all that stuff. And so like, I just trained these dogs with the hissing. Now the reason I'm bringing that up is in the documentation of our history of our elk dogs, uh, we never whistled, we would hiss. It's the whites described it as, you know, the Minjins would be hissing through their teeth like devils, you know. They, any chance they had to make us out to seem like bad, you know, or just bad evil people. Oh, you know, we're just so nasty. Hissing through our teeth like devils. Ugh. And all we're doing is going, shh, shh, shh. okay, miracle dogs. See that? See that? Who's my me like up dog number one? Of course, we don't know who number one is because then jealousy would ensue. You're both number one, right? So anyhow, day in the life of a researcher. Stop doing Goldie. You're freaking disturbing delicate ecosystems, you mutt. Bella. And so I'll probably go home and then I'll get in my books, you know, and I'll be like, oh, this ties to this and this ties to that. And I think I saw this in the dog, you know, and that's why I freaking tried to do this stuff in real life, you know, like it ain't just for fun, you know, I'm out here trying to visualize in a modern context, my living culture and breathe some life into it while I'm at it. Girls! Woo! hill climbers oh here's another culturally modified tree this is the uh it's like the girls are just telling me where to go they want me to show you the old trails culturally modified tree means that the alsea tillamook people here because we're kind of in a gradient zone of their culture on the coast stop baby the freaking spruce roots man well, at least i know where to dig for spruce roots freaking bum but anyhow the old trail goes down here and it's marked by this culturally uh, modified tree. And so now we would tweak these trees in tradition to mark places that, you know, were trails or like geographic features. And I mean, you can see that's a big honker. That's probably, ooh, I don't know, 200 years old at least at the base, you know. Girls! Now you can see how the trail goes down. When I first seen it, I was going, nah, it's a logging trail, you know. And now you see this one was logged out. Old oh, girls there. This is just an old deadfall. And there's lots of old historic logs that were logged out. But, uh, anyhow, I thought it was a logging trail, so I followed her down. And now she turns into a footpath that kind of divides out. And then there's uh, an old fishing area down there. For like eel traps and salmon weirs and stuff like that. But anywho, yeah. Amongst a few other researchers, we kind of feel that the reason these culturally modified trees even survived is because uh, 
This area was historically logged by our ancestors, the Siletz people, and they'd have known that these were special. And they'd have been fairly young, you know, at the time. Maybe they could have said, oh, they're too young to be logged out, and that's why they saved them, you know, who knows. But anyhow, I'm gonna get these old Mila Kelp dogs up the hill. Girls, woo! I was meant to impress everybody at the end, like the big shining achievement of my speech. And these bums are gonna slack on the way up. Come on, beach bums! There we go. Just as slow as possible. Drag your heels. Drag your heels. Good job showing off the old trail and everything. You can see how it's got a lot of young cedar on the trail, but it's marked on either side by old growth and the cultural tree down there. And then there's another big wacky one down there that's real cool to see. But anyhow, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna say, home G! And uh, tell this dog to stop digging. All right, home G!